All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the final match of today's Group A, Shoutcraft America. And I've got Maker and Minigun on the line today. Maker will be the faceless man today since his camera is not working. We're not sure why, but of course we do have the wonderful, wonderful visage of Chad Jones, Minigun here. So, Minigun, you were watching that last match. You watched your teammate get knocked out. How are you feeling going into this match? Uh, angry, man. I'm gonna beat him again, 2-0. Yeah. Ah, all right. I can't knock out Root like that. No, I, I don't think that's really a reasonable thing to do, isn't it? You've got to avenge your teammate, but make it. So, you got beaten pretty convincingly by Minigun in the first series. So, what are you planning on changing? Don't be specific, of course, but I'd like to know how you're not going to get destroyed this time around. Yeah, well, I think I was pretty nervous on the first set against Minigun. I don't know why, but I was completely playing very bad. Mm hmm so I, I think I'm feeling very good now. So I, I'm not going to change too many things because the way that I practice is, the, is what I'm going to show. So I'm not going to change that many things, but only a, a little few. All right. So who knows whether or not he's telling the truth there, Chad. I'm sorry. I mean, you might <laughs> see Six Racks Proxy Reaper coming in very soon. Who knows? <laughs> But I've got to say, we saw Maker convincingly take out Vibe in the third game, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you can say what you want about Cheese. Cheese is a valid strategy in competitive play. Everybody knows that. But game three, you know, he looked scary. Like, he looked like the GM Maker that is consistently beating everybody in the, on the ladder. So are you really that confident against him going into this? Um, well, PPT is my best matchup, so if I don't win this one then, I don't know, <laughs> probably didn't deserve to to pass. It's always um, a good attitude to have. Of course, if you get through, that'll be two route through to the round of eight, having seen Puck go in fine style already. If you don't, then Maker will be joining Puck as one of the contestants in the round of eight. So, any final words, Minigun, for your opponent today? It's good luck, have fun. Excellent. And Maker? <laughs> good luck, have fun as well. Wonderful. All right, guys, to your stations. We'll be setting this up very, very shortly. So, Husky, you watched up, that PB? first series. You watched it. I you did. Watched, it was brutal, man. It, was, it wasn't even close. What does Maker have to do to change that? Yeah, I want to say that, not take anything away from Minigun, because God knows I love Minigun, but I feel like in the series that uh, Maker played against Minigun, it was more Maker beating himself as opposed to Minigun doing anything spectacular. Now, Minigun did do some pretty cool stuff. I love the defensive style play of Protoss versus Terran. I think it is the strongest way to play versus Terran right now. Um, but I, I think that if he can get a, a cool grasp on his nerves, if he can calm down a little bit, cool his jets and all that, then I think he's actually going to be able to give uh, Minigun a run for his money. Based on what I've seen, I still think Minigun has this. But if Maker plays like we saw towards the end of last game and plays it throughout the, the entire series, I think it definitely could go either way with a slight edge to Minigun right now. We'll see. I, I, I certainly think Maker can take a game, but he's going to have to show a way different style. I don't think that Hellbat drop is the way to go. I think maybe he should consider Widowmine, which obviously is a more common thing. But then you've got to bear in mind, of course, that he is also... He'd be playing a style that's very familiar to Minigun. So trying to maybe throw a wrench in the works, or a spanner, as we like to call it, into the works might work. Apparently, Mike, you're offline on StarCraft 2, so you might want to get in the game. Oh, I... That is I, weird. It, it probably I... bugged out. Like, we've seen this in HOTS, actually, quite a bit. The lobby's most likely bugged. So if you can rejoin, that would be absolutely wonderful. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, man. I didn't log out, I swear, but I'm logging back in right now. Good to know. Um... Good to know. All right, you'll be there with us certainly momentarily. But there we it's, go. I think this is an uphill battle for Maker. I think he's got a lot to prove here. I think he proved himself in that final map against Vibe. It's like, all right, I can take on, I can take on the best in this tournament. I can do that happen. I can make that happen, and I can do it without cheesing. So, but now what does he do against Minigun, who is like super solid in this matchup? Yeah, I think I think Minigun just has a good grasp on PBT. He's saying that it's his best matchup. He's feeling great about it. Um, I think in one of the interviews they were saying that last season he finished with a 70% win rate versus uh, versus Terran, which is something that it just feels good 
not only to have a really strong matchup, but to also know that in the first elimination round, you're getting that matchup twice against someone you just beat. So yeah. Minigun, as long as he doesn't get overconfident, he does have reason to be confident. And yes. uh, I'm curious to see if, if Maker can just calm down a little bit. I think that that's really what it's going to come down to. We can't be seeing any big mistakes. We can't be having Minigun rallying his workers that aren't mining. We can't be seeing Maker lowering depots at the wrong time. They have to play perfect here. Whoever makes the least amount of mistakes will definitely advance. Very, very true indeed. We're just waiting for you, Mike. You are the delay for this tournament this time. What, what did I do now? Ah, there you are. You're in there. Excellent. Yes, yes. Cool. I, I finally got to load there. I'm sorry for ruining everything, TB. You're terrible at this, man. I, don't I know. Even, why Why you do you still have a job? You want to explain I, that to me? I don't know why you invited me to this. I, I guess the other casters were just all ill. That, that's yeah. the only reason I can come up with. Yeah, absolutely. That that was exactly what was happening. I know that Day9 is suffering from a serious case of being bad at Magic the gathering Itis. So oh, that's, that's true. That's a bit of a problem there. In Control has actually got serious mental issues. He now believes he is his character from roleplay. So it's a uh, bit difficult to kind of bring him out tough. of his shell to cast. He uh, he tries to cleave everyone with a battle axe nearby, which really doesn't which work actually, out so well. It would be a fun cast. It's just yeah, someone definitely. would end up dead. So I don't know if that's good for the scene or not. Probably not. But uh, I just want to say, while they're getting everything set up in this game, is that... One time, I bought a bunch of Magic cards to do a friendly draft tournament with my roommates and good friend Day9, and he cheated so many times <laughs> so that he wouldn't lose to me, and it was like the most friendly draft ever, and homie cheated like in eight different ways, and I'm like, Sean, I, I know you want to win this friendly tournament, but we all just got to calm down a little bit, and then he still beat me 2-1, but it, he, I'm telling you, man, he is he is try-hard mode at, uh, at Magic. That doesn't surprise me in any way. All right, folks, we are in. It's going to be Star Station. That will be the first map of this final series here at Shoutcraft America. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Star Station and to Root Minigun. He is in the red trunks and he is playing Protoss to the northeast of Star Station versus his opponent, who just took out one of his teammates and is looking to make it two in the blue trunks playing... Terran to the southeast. It is KLG's Maker. All right, they do have that vertical spawn once again. I think we've seen that every single time on this map so far. There is going to be diagonal spawn capabilities for this map. Uh, those ones are not blocked, but uh, right now it is going to be vertical spawns, which again makes expanding to that uh, center right expansion between the two thirds basically impossible. Probably not going to see that taken whatsoever. Instead, the expansions will be working their way outwards if it even makes it that far. And one thing about this matchup is that there's early aggression that both players can do, and there's mid-game timings that both players can do, and there's more late game for Protoss than there is for Terran, but we could see this game go to any phase just because there's lots of uh, there's lots of possibilities on builds right now. There's no question about that. So I think that at this in this kind of situation, what I'd like to see from Maker is just standard play, because I think his gimmicky stuff didn't work at all. Like Minigun just shut it down horribly. It was it was horrible to watch actually. So I think he's got to play macro. Maybe you you know you get a little bit aggressive here and there, but don't overdo it. And that's what Maker did in the first couple of games. He's like losing dropships full of hellbats and all sorts of nasty things. It, you can't do that. Definitely can't do the two racks again. I would be very surprised to see that. I think. The drops would have been a little bit better if uh, if they were just microed correctly and the decision making was better. But even then, Minigun has shown us, look, I get the early Mothership Core for Photon Overcharge. I, I don't aggressively expand. We saw some pretty conservative expansion timings there to make sure he has enough units to actually defend all those locations. So that kind of play, again, is going to be tough to pull off. And really, what does that leave you as Terran? Well, you can try and force into the late game, but it's very difficult to micro versus a, a, a big tier three protoss um so i don't know i i, I still think multi-prong drops in the mid game uh, which is standard is going to be what it takes he just needs to to micro it a lot better uh to to be honest yeah i think you're probably right there so we're gonna see a reaper opening here not that uncommon in this matchup it seems weird when you think about it. it's like but a stalker will kill it yes but it doesn't really matter it's not for doing damage it's for trying to find out what your opponent's doing and to, to be a constant annoyance yes stalkers will kill it but pretty slowly as this is not an armored unit this is a light unit they don't get the bonus damage against it and it just in general it can dip in and out and it can regen its health so he's gonna get some good information here a zealot comes out early on this is an interesting decision here by minigun to actually build that early zealot i feel 
He's going to build Sentry now as well, actually. This is not great against Reaper at all. Yeah, going the, going against the Reaper is super annoying. Keep in mind the Reaper does not do additional damage versus light units, no. but the Sentry, it just moves so slow, and it has such a short range that it's still not the best option. But uh, for now, he is at one kill. If the Reaper gets two kills, that definitely makes it worth it. Um, one kill and scouting is worth it as well. Might be able to kill off that probe if he swings around the other side. Sentry, though, says no. Get the hell out of this base. We do have a yeah. command center. Two more racks on the way. And this, TB, you're saying, should play standard. This is the standard Terran build. Expand yes. off of one racks get two more racks, uh, kind of size up your opponent, and then take it from there. Yeah, it's ridiculously standard in the sense of this new the Terran build right now generally involves the reactor early on, and it involves just pumping out a lot of Marines, and then you, you use the gas for the Reaper, so instead of like going for an earlier stim, you get that reactor down, and you just, you just overpower the defense with a bunch of Marines, so you don't really have to worry too much about being hit anytime soon, and then you take the stim a little bit later. Which works fine. Uh, that's totally fine. And this Reaper is continuing to be annoying. The Mothership Core and the Sentry could kill it easily, but that's a case of, you've got to catch him. <laughs> it's like if this Reap if he forces a force field out of this Sentry, for instance, that's probably a win in and of itself. So this is annoying. It's getting a lot of information, and without a Stalker on the field, it's going to be very difficult to actually kill that. And the reason I love the Reaper opening on this map is there is so much space for that Reaper to just jump in and out. There's literally some maps where there's there's hardly any room, so you almost never see Reaper openers there. But just based on the map alone, it immediately becomes worth it. The Reaper now up to two kills, so it is more than worth it. It's going to spot the other gateways. And it's one of those things where obviously they can't go the same build because they're identical races, so that's yeah. not even physically possible. But it is as similar as it can get. An expansion with three gateways is very comparable to an expansion with three barracks. Um, the follow-up is going to be a Robo, so Minigun, I mean, this is like as standard as it gets, other than the Proxy Twilight Council down the bottom left side. Yes, it's the Proxy Twilight Council that starts to get really, really funky, isn't it? That's a very odd place to put it, but it's all you can really do. If a Reaper scouted everything you've got, then you can't just... You, this is the state, state of the game where this Reaper shouldn't even be in the base, but it is. I think it's finally yeah. going to get... Yeah, it's going to get cleaned up now by the looks of it. So, this Proxy Twilight is an interesting move. And let's see if Maker smells it, because Maker might be saying to himself, you know what, where's your tech? You want to tell me where it is? Because I don't know. I have no idea. And now we're going to see the Dark Shrine go down as well. So Maker has got to get a smell of what's coming. Otherwise, he is going to be in a huge amount of trouble. Alrighty, the Marines are going to be moving out. The Mothership Core here does have enough energy for a Photon Overcharge. That is a surprising amount of Marines. Um, the Zealot's going to get taken out, only doing one hit of damage there, and this will cause him to warp in two additional sentries. He doesn't want to be doing this, though, because he's kind of racing against the clock. The Dark Shrine's on the way, he yeah. probably has a Warp Prism on the way, and he wants to have that all good to go at the exact same time. There's a Photon Overcharge, does force it. Maker may think that this is a... Oh, the Mothership Core's got to be careful, what are you doing? Oh, so Core. close. So Almost close. That. Maker may see this as a win, but if he does not prepare for the DT drop... He's going to be in a lot of trouble. Keep in mind that he can also load in DTs on the right side to, uh, he doesn't even have to warp them in, he can just unload them. Yeah. Um, but either way, it's got to be hitting here in just a matter of moments. And this army is completely out of position. Yeah, I mean, even if it was in position, it's going to be hard to deal with this, honestly. Yeah, he is, I think he's going to do exactly what you said, which is, to, he's going to deploy this, he's going to warp the DTs in, he's going to load them up as soon, there we go, we're going to see the warp in right now. He's going to load them up, and then he's going to drop them in, and that gives his warp gates more time to cool down. It's better than warping them in there, because you've got a few seconds of awareness. You could just drop it right here, this DT is going to get in there. Let's see how much energy. All right, so the scan energy on the main and the scan energy on the natural. So unless he drops two mules now, it's going to be pretty good. Oh, and actually, Maker's going to make his way right into the base, but a nice trap here thrown down with those force fields. The DT is in position and is now doing damage. There is scan energy available, but he needs units to kill it. So he does have those units now. Maker is doing so much damage with this. He has got himself right into the main mineral line there of his opponent. There's the scan. That's going to be dead DT as well. He's trying to focus down the robot. If he gets that, that would be absolutely huge. Now trying to respond to this Dark Templar play. Yeah, he didn't lose as many workers as I originally thought he would. Both players sitting at around 40. Yeah. And uh, I think Maker doing just enough damage that the fact that he got DTs in his main base has been negated a little bit. But he doesn't... Oh, now he does have a missile turret actually at the mineral line. I don't know yeah. if that army is in position here. It needs to uh, kill Maker, that. you got you to gotta protect the missile turret there, buddy. He's and... focused, man. He's focusing on trying to take down the natural, which is not going to happen. I think it's going to get surrounded by probes here. And damage is going to be done, certainly. But... Yeah, this, this DT actually did more than it should have. 
considering. Uh, Maker was just so focused on trying to do damage at the natural. Okay, so things have now stabilized for both players. And that, in my opinion, does actually puts Maker sizably in the lead. He's got a way bigger army, and he also has mules as well. So he'll be able to retransfer to his main base, start mining again. And this DT ploy is kind of shut down now. He's ready for it. We're going to see another Dark Templar drop, but Maker does have units ready to actually pick this up. As long as the DT goes near the missile turret, which he will, and... Oh, does kill off one SCV right there. The saturation not nearly as even as it should be between the two no, bases, but he's working not. on getting out more SCVs. And he's pushing out here. Uh, did the Martian Core die? Martian Core's actually... dead. It's not in play. There's yeah. like so little here. There's actually no sentries either. This is big. Like, Maker could actually destroy this natural very easily. And there's the GG! And GG! Wow, what an aggressive yeah. timing there from Maker. And gimmicky play forced, I suppose, from from minigun and i think that's the cool thing about what he did there because he was so good with that reaper scout he put minigun in a situation where minigun wasn't comfortable and he threw minigun off completely with that he tries for the proxy play but then takes a huge amount of damage from the straight up aggression of maker yeah he, he needed to do more worker damage with those dts um there was no army there there was no detection but the the workers were still able to escape down to that natural and then marine marauder i mean like we were saying before you want to be aggressive with the marine marauder uh, as early not, not necessarily as early as you can but you definitely the sooner the better because the longer the game goes on that's when minigun starts to get comfortable so maker i think did the correct choice there being more aggressive i thought he was in trouble when that army got sliced in half but he was yeah. still able to kill a lot of probes when they were transferring through so that is exactly what he needed to uh, to take the win. Well, at the end of the day, Minigun wasn't able to stop the units from getting up the ramp. So you can slice the army up, but if half of it gets into the main and starts doing huge amounts of damage, you you are no, in no you can't walk past the remaining units on the, uh, the natural just to go and fight them. You've got to clean them up first. In the meantime, that army did so much damage. That was some really great play by Mega. Excellent control. That Reaper control was astronomically good. Uh, he was really, really good. And uh, Minigun was forced into an awkward spot. We'll be back after this break to find out whether or not Minigun can pull it back or whether Maker will put down a second root player in Group A in advance of the round of eight. All right. This could be the final game. Will Minigun be able to pull it back? That was a surprising loss, I think, for a lot of people. Maker came out, all pistons firing, and obliterated Minigun. Like... He really did. Like, his control was great. His timings were great, too. He busts out some really aggressive timings against Minigun strategy, and Minigun's Dark Templar play fails completely. He had to do damage with that Dark Templar. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if he had warped in the DTs in a defensive position and went for Archons, it's kind of a weird timing where Archons aren't really that useful because there's yeah. nothing to protect them from being kited. Yeah. So he had to go at that point with the attack. And I think the important thing to remember is it wasn't only just a Dark Templar attack. It also incorporated the Warp Prism, which is not only the cost of the Warp Prism, but also the cost of the Robo, which didn't serve any other purpose after that. So it, it just was a bad situation to be in. And I think if Minigun can deny the scouting a little bit earlier, not even trying to hide his tech and then maybe just play a little bit more standard, then he'll be able to take this game. Yeah, we will find out. Akalon Wastes will be the venue for this particular encounter. This is, of course, Minigun's choice, so let's see what he's got prepared for us here. Sporting to the uh, southeast position, ladies and gentlemen, in the red trunks, uh, playing Protoss for Team Root. It is Minigun versus his opponent with a surprising 1-0 lead, showing why he's, you know... People call these guys ladder heroes a lot of the time because you don't see Maker in a lot of tournaments, but you see him just destroying the ladder, right? This is the kind of play that gets him there. Let's see if this is enough to overcome Minigun, an experienced tournament player in the Blue Trunks, playing Terran to the northwest. It is Chaos Latin Gamers Minigun. No, it isn't. It's Maker, not Minigun. Although weird. Minigun is a, is a pretty fun name to say, so yeah, I, I don't I like blame Minigun. you there. Like, can we just have an entire tournament of just Minigun? It would be great. <laughs> I, I would be okay with that. It's, it's kind of like when uh, Hero played versus Hero. Hero. Oh, so that was ago. great. Yeah. And, <laughs> and my favorite part is that they, they both play Protoss. So that is, oh, you can't even say the yeah. Terran player. I, I don't know how anyone would ever cast that. That is, that is like Caster nightmare. Olympics right there. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Oh, man. Anyway, folks. Let's see how this one goes. So we still have about 27,000 viewers, which is really cool. I know a lot of the Europeans have gone to bed now. This did 
go a bit later than we anticipated. We're getting on to about the six hour mark now. It's mostly due to technical problems. Hopefully the week two will be significantly quicker and a little bit slicker. And of course we did have some crazy long games. I don't think anyone expected the PvP series between Minigun and Puck to take over an hour. Well, and also when we started the game or started the tournament with game one being 50 minutes long, that's when you know it's going to yeah, be a long night. Uh, Gateway yeah. going to be going down for Minigun. Gas as well. And uh, I just got to say how quickly Maker went from being one game away from being eliminated to being one game away from advancing. And that's kind of how StarCraft is, is. If you get in the right mentality, get in the right headspace, then uh, just keep playing. And that's exactly what he did and is now one game away from knocking out his second root player. Well, he's going to go for the same build again, which is cool. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, especially when you have a map in hand, because then you force your opponent to adapt to it. If they fail to adapt to it, they lose. If they manage to adapt to it, you still have a map left. So you, you don't have to show another build. You can just hold on, use the same build, and then you can think, all right, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So is Minigun actually going to build a Stalker this time? Because... The funny... I hope I'm right here. I really do, because otherwise I'm going to be called out. A sentry actually beats a Reaper in a straight-up fight, if that actually happens. Of course, you would never have a straight-up fight, because you would just micro out and then micro back in once you regenerated. But, yeah, a sentry can beat a Reaper. So it's okay to get a sentry. It's okay to get a Mothership Core. But there was just so much scouting information gained by Maker this time around. I have to wonder if he can pull that off again. Well, Minigun does keep selecting it. He does decide to go for the Stalker this time. Zealot will actually get a... Nope. No, Almost. It, it, it started the animation, but didn't quite finish it off there. Mothership Core does spawn, start shooting it down right away. There's the and, 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 Yeah, and again, focusing on getting a Stalker out so that he can actually clean out the scouting because that made him so uncomfortable last time. We do have the double barracks now up for Maker uh, on the back of an expansion here. So I think he realized, hey, a straight up game actually does work. So yeah. let's try that again. Yeah, I can play straight up against this guy. I don't have to use gimmicky play because I'm good enough to make sure that isn't really a problem. So I like this a lot. I, I like the fact that he's not throwing in any crazy stuff right now. I think maybe you save that for the final game if you go for another macro game and you realize, oh yeah, Minigun's figured me out now. Because if you think about it, Minigun didn't get to play a straight up macro game. It, he wanted to. But he was forced into a situation where he had to use something a bit gimmicky, actually proxy his Twilight, basically cheese, in order to deal with what was coming at him. So Minigun has got to use a different strategy this time around. He's got to be able to defend better than what he did previously, and where possible, avoid having to use anything a little bit weird. Motion of core poking around a little bit. If you're wondering why Maker did not react to that, keep in mind that buildings have less vision distance than units do. Uh, so do. Motion core, uh, if, you, if you look at the motion core, it actually can see a lot. Like even just yeah. looking at the minimap, it's like it almost feels like a watchtower. So floating that around to see exactly what's going on is uh, something that a lot of Protoss players have started to do. It's not necessarily to kill anything. It's not necessarily to do anything like that. Just think of it like a really fast moving overlord um, that you can eventually just slowly move back to your base. The one Reaper is still out which means that this tech could be scouted. And what is the tech? Well, still just going to be a robo here. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty safe, honestly. This doesn't really reveal all that much, I feel. Since the expansion isn't down, we don't see two more gas, but the Twilight's coming down now. So this actually is probably going to get scouted if he doesn't respond very quickly to this. And this would be great. Oh, can he get in? I, he's go he's going to scout this, I think. Maybe, maybe. Oh, force field! Ah! That was really close. I don't think he saw that Twilight Council. Let me double check. No, he didn't. He saw the Robo, but no Twilight Council. So that was a great save there by Minigun. Yeah, now it's a situation for Maker where he's like, all right, is it going to be some sort of Twilight tech or is it going to be Colossus tech? Uh, you need a completely opposite responses depending on which one it is. So is it going to be a scan to try and reveal that? Is he going to play a little bit in the dark? Um, you can see right now the Maker doing the same thing so he did last push, game. Yeah, this big timing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a combat shield timing. It's really simple as that. It hits when combat shield is up. It hits when your opponent doesn't have a lot. And honestly, like, if Minigun loses the Stalker in the center of the map, oh, yeah, that, that, would, that would be disastrous. But let's see if he does a better job holding it this time around. Photon overcharge comes up, needs a force field the ramp. If those Marines get any closer, I think the Marines are just going to swing right the hell out of there. Yeah. Um, he did force the Photon overcharge, which is nice. That means yeah. less harassment capabilities. Stalker's going to be chasing this, which uh, is also smart, but you do have to be very, very careful because the Marines can abuse those uh, vision blockers, uh, but it doesn't look like that is going to happen as they Ooh. just retreat home. 
Look at that pylon placement there by Minigun. He managed to sneak that one out. That's that's really good. That will enable him to put a position in play where he's able to sort of threaten at this third base here. Could throw down another pylon as well. He does have the watchtower on the right side, and no one opting to go for the watchtower on the left side. Keep in mind that these watchtowers are a little bit out of the way. Um, so you're not really going to be spotting anything other than maybe a drop later on. But for now, having watchtower control doesn't mean a whole lot. Double forage on the way for uh, for Minigun, which is great for Protoss unless Terran punishes this at the exact right moment. The thing is, there's already one timing that, Mi that Maker used that didn't really do anything. So he was looking to do a little bit of damage, a little bit of a poke. And last time, his poke actually won in the game. This time around, he wasn't able to do anything with it. Yeah, he forces, forces a photon overcharge. It doesn't matter because the, there's no follow-up aggression. So this Mothership Core is going to have 200 energy again by the time the next one comes in. So he's got to play the more standard timing, which is the, he, he maybe gets two or four medevacs, and then he either pressures or he starts to drop. It does look like Blink is done. Uh, this is definitely not a Blink Stalker all-in by any means, because nope. there's only five Stalkers here. But what he can do is scare this army uh, if it was just pure Marine. There are the three Marauders there, though, so it's probably a good idea to head on home. Yep. Marauders, kind of ridiculous versus Gateway units. Um, but again, like I was saying, punishing the 1-1 uh, one -one can really hurt a Protoss player here. Maker moving out, that 1-1 one -one is not going to be done. It doesn't matter how much you Chrono Boost that out. So nope. he's going to have to rely on pure gateway units. Oh, no, is he actually supply blocked right now? Yes, he is. That Colossus just now beginning. And this is a That's moment really that bad. all Protoss players hate to watch, but he's got to force field that ramp right now. Yeah, he's got to make it work pretty well. There we go. So he manages that. He takes out a couple of units here and there. He could elevate, but that's very, very risky against Blink Stalkers. That's the one thing that Minigun's got right now, is any drop attempt is going to be shut down pretty hard by Blink Stalkers, assuming that Minigun's doing the right thing. Another force field goes in. It leaks, though. He actually gets a few units through, but doesn't really do a lot. He's actually going to drop right on top of the army. I don't know if I like that, but he looks like he's managed to get in a good position. Photon Overcharge goes up as well, but so far he hasn't been able to do any damage to the economy of his opponent. As you said, the Colossus is actually now in play. It just got in there, so I think Minigun holds this. He's going right for the Colossus. He's... Ah, he's not gonna get it and that, that was disastrous for maker minigun completely need, punishes that risk yeah needless risk to try and kill it up i mean that's like what you do in platinum league is try and kill the high level colossus on the uh, on the high ground there but he just sacrificed his whole army for that yeah not that, good i i've done that like at least three times in the past five days you know all credit to me like two out of three times it worked but in this case, Minigun did shut that down hard. He punished his opponent really hard for getting impetuous and getting overly aggressive. And now Minigun's in a really nice spot. He is he has an upgrade lead. Start is 2-2. The armory did come down. Four Vitans at a time coming out here for Maker. And this is... Maker does tend to do this whole double star port thing, which is something I've noticed. A lot of Terran just use one star port until the later game where the Colossi count gets overwhelming. But honestly, I think that... Minigun is now in, a, in his comfort zone. This is the kind of situation where he just destroyed Maker in the first series. This is exactly not only where Minigun's going to feel comfortable, but Protoss in general. Again, if you set the pace of the game in the early to mid game, then uh, you're in pretty good shape for the late game. The 2-2 attack is on the way uh, with the armor as well. Not sure if he's going to be able to get that up in time, but really I can't imagine how Maker can put on too much pressure other than multi-prong drops. Um, I... It's just tough because there's so few Terran players out there who can control the way they need to versus a late game Protoss army to consistently win to make yeah. it look one sided. Yeah. And that's exactly the kind of maneuvers that Maker is going to have to pull out here moving forward because just going Marine Marauder Medivac, it's an old school style, but it is very susceptible to, uh, to the tier three Protoss. It absolutely is, because you you end up in the situation where the Protoss is constantly tech-switching, and you have to match that. So if he goes Templar, you need Ghosts. If he goes Colossus, you need Vikings, and you need the right number. And what I've seen lately, a great example, you remember Bjorn versus Crank in the GSTL? What happened there was the Terran player over-dedicated to making specialist units. He made too many Ghosts and too many Vikings, and then didn't engage well. But here it comes. We're going to see, uh, I think, at least one Colossus dead. Oh, that was... Well, he takes the Mothership Core out, but he could have easily taken one Colossus there. So I don't like that engagement from Maker. I really don't. And Minigun is still looking strong, but we might see some more aggression. No drop coming in yet. So that's interesting that he just kind of pokes at the front here. That's allowed Minigun to establish a third base, whereas Maker is actually still on two. I was going to say, I can't believe that Maker hasn't made a third base here. What I think he's going to have to do, since this third base is going to be so late, is just go for it. Either get 
as many units as he can off this two base. Uh, as soon as one mineral patch disappears in his main base, which is going to be in just a moment. Uh, I think, he, is he going to bring these SCVs with him? Yes, he is. All right, I was going to say, he has to just go for this because his expansion timing is way too late. He's just got to bring the SCVs on. Yeah, he's and, all in uh, now. Yeah, this is uh, predictable at this point because if you don't see a third base by now, oh, it's going to get it seen as well. Can do. Minigun and likes also, both sides yeah, and I was going to say, he needs to cancel that Nexus. He does. He was going to throw down a fourth one as well. But the Observer spots this. Minigun knows what's up. He's got the Concave. Uh, how many sentries does he have? Does he have uh, only three? So he's not going to mm. be able to buy much time with that. But I don't know. Well, we'll see if this actually ends up working out. A lot of times you think it doesn't, and then it does. So we'll see. It can, potentially. There is no storm on the map, which I think is the big edge that Makers got here, but obviously he doesn't want to just run directly into the Colossus. That would be pretty bad indeed. The SCVs are at the front and immediately get obliterated right there. The Vikings take down one, takes down a second. Look to try and break this. He, I think he might have what he needs to break this, you know. I think Minigun being caught with that Nexus going up, trying to get tech, trying to go into a transition, might be in an ugly spot, but he's not down yet. Good force fields coming. More reinforcements coming in from Maker from the back here. The Colossi count is at zero. We've now got Archons in the fray. These Vikings are not going to do anything. They land. He knows that. Another Archon falls. Maker's still looking pretty good here but minigun is defending and we need to see better play here from maker he's got to focus fire can he break his way he's into the natural right now and takes down another archon things are looking all right for maker right now will minigun actually go out to this full on all in right here great use of the force field he may have to sack the natural but it's 59 probes to seven workers if he holds on to his main he can still win this yeah, I mean, there's really no way for Maker to get up this ramp and actually destroy him. Uh, no. Minigun has a lot of money in the bank. Even if it's only Zealots, that doesn't matter. And even if he loses this expansion, like, that also doesn't matter. Yeah, so Minigun still got has the supply that lead now in terms of his yeah. army. I think that with no way to get rid of this Colossus, I think this is probably going to be GG pretty soon. The all-in almost worked, but Minigun held on to his main base and also had that third base going, which I don't think Maker actually knows about. There's the GG, and one apiece now in this best of three series. We're going to the final game of Group A of Shoutcraft America. I gotta say, man, lots of uh, close series here for game number, or for uh, day number one, I think. It was only one of them 2-0 and the rest were 2-1. Either way, it's been several 2-1s right now, yep. and uh, it still could go either way. Um, I feel like the fact that Maker was never able to do um, a lot of upfront damage, again, set the pace for Minigun, and he was able to establish that. I think canceling that fourth base was the smart choice. He hadn't placed it yet, but he had spent the money to place it, and uh, canceling that from going down, making a lot of stuff, getting the concave there. I mean, really the problem was that when Maker ran up the ramp, like all three or four Colossus just basically killed all the SCVs in like one shot. You have to rely on those SCVs absorbing a couple of volleys. Choke points are pretty good when you're the Protoss defending, and uh, that's why it didn't end up working out. All right, the final game is coming in, folks. The final match of the evening between Maker and Minigun is currently one apiece in this best of three series. One advances to the round of eight where the money goes up, and one... Well, he will be going home with, I wouldn't say nothing. He's had tips and, of course, his $75 prize, but he wants more. Let's find out who gets it right after this break. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. The final map of today's play. Thank you for sticking with us through all the problems. I hope that you had a good time, and we promise to improve for week two. Maker versus Minigun, one apiece. Final map will be Neo Planet S. Husky, who wins? Oh, God, TB. I'm going to say Minigun. How about you? you? Think? All right. I think that if... I I would fully expect Maker to actually pull out something weird here, honestly. I, I think maybe he thinks, oh, right. Ma straight up macro against Minigun. Unless I'm able to make that early game aggression work. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. So I think maybe he pulls out something funky. Maybe we see a lot more Hellbats in the composition again. I hope he doesn't go for the Hellbat drop again, because that was really bad. But we'll see. I'm interested. I'm really interested, man. This is going to be a good match. Well, it definitely shows that uh, the format of this tournament has a lot of equally matched players out there. We have had a lot of 2-1s so no, far. And this is only the first group. Uh, more groups to come. Not not today, though, because I'm, I'm probably going to fall asleep if we do too many more games, because we've been going for quite some time. But thank you to everyone for tuning in. This has been day number one of Shoutcraft America. It has been an absolute honor. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the absolute last game of today, yes. no matter what happens. Yes, it is the last game. We come to the end of a over six-hour casting session here today. We hope that the future episodes will be a little better 
bit more polished. But I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. So, for the last time today, in the Red Trunks, uh, playing Protoss to the northeast of Neo Planet S, it is Root Minigun versus his opponent. In the Blue Trunks, playing Terran to the southwest position, it is Chaos Latin Gamers Maker. All right, now this map, very, very small map. We saw some aggression attempted on this map by Maker in a previous game versus his opponent. It was flip spawns, not that that really matters all that much, yep. but uh, will we be seeing that once again? If you're going to be going for early aggression, this is probably one of the better maps to do it on, uh, especially considering all a lot of the other maps in the map who right now are very large. Yep. And uh, TB, you're predicting something a little bit funky, so now I'm eagerly awaiting such funkiness. And uh, Minigun, I assume what Minigun's going to do here, just based on every game we've seen ever, is just try to defend, defend, defend. Yeah, and Minigun tends to be the more defensive player in this matchup, and then he does, he seems to do pretty well based on that. You, you can't really argue with his style, because he very rarely makes mistakes. When he does make a mistake, he gets caught out of position. I, I We may see the same thing from Maker. I mean, w what we do know from Maker is he always starts with gas every single time. Sometimes he goes gas first, but he's always throwing that gas down. But the question is, what does he then do with it? Do we see exactly the same build? Because I feel like Minigun's just got wise to it now. Is this a map where it works better? No. Not in my opinion. Probe right there, scouting out. We'll see that gas. You can see that's the first thing he goes to check is both of those gas. To see, yep, there's three SCVs inside. It's probably going to be a Reaper on the way first. I don't think Minigun knows that it'll be a Marine first, just because he didn't see when those SCVs transferred in there, but uh, it will indeed be a Marine first. Might be a Reaper to follow it up, as, again, scouting is nearly impossible. But uh, Minigun throwing down his second gas. No, I don't think he made a Zealot, so no Zealot out uh, just yet. And we'll see if he decides he does go for it once again. So he really likes this Zealot before Stalker style. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It seems to work pretty well, but no Reaper this time. So this is a different build. The gas is being used to get an earlier factory. I would love to see Widowmine drop from Maker. I would love to see that because he hasn't really used it all tournament. He obviously used Widowmines against Vibe to great effect, but Widowmine drop against Protoss is really good depending on where they go. If they go an early Robo, it's not so good. If they go a Stargate with an Oracle, can be good. Depends. It depends if the Oracle is halfway across the map by the time the Widowmines actually hit. But if they don't have some kind of detection, then Widowmine could be just horrible to deal with. But we'll see. We may just see... As this is really interesting. That's Concussive Shell. We could see Marauder Hellion here, maybe. That would be would interesting. Be, yeah, quite an interesting play there. It is going to be a Widowmine for now. Yeah. Mothership Core is going to move out and spot this. Unless the two Marines actually get a good angle and scare the Mothership Core away before it does spot. One thing I want to mention about the Widow Mines is it does not kill Roaches in one shot, but it does kill Stalkers in yes, one shot. I think that's something that a lot of players forget, that the Widow Mine does additional damage to shields. Mm -hmm. So that makes them very effective if used correctly. Now the Mothership Core is going to find a nice angle to get in here. Spots the factory, sees one upgrade, and also will spot the Widow Mine spawning. My god, that could nice. not have been a better time Mothership Core. And it sees everything. So this gives him a very valuable 10 to 15 seconds to prepare. Decides to throw down the Robo in reaction to this. Uh, so he has detection for that. But uh, that that much of core it was like the hacks. It saw everything it needed to. All right, so this poke could do damage. There's no question. The Widow Mine could be very, very useful. If it took out a Stalker and then left the two Marines and two Marauders to deal with the two other Stalkers that would be there, that would be great. This is going to be able to walk mostly past it and then deploy, and this is going to connect. So down goes the That's Stalker. Huge. That was actually a really l nice little play here. Now he's going to just be a little bit aggressive here. He's going to force this Mothership Core back. He's actually going to bunker up. When was the last time you saw this against Protoss, man? Yeah, he attempted something similar with the two racks, but this time it's a barracks and a factory. You can see Minigun's trying to rely on his Photon Overcharge. That's his game plan right now. If he allows the next defense, we'll lose another Stalker there. I think Photon Overcharge oh, didn't get will the be up. enough. And yeah, he delayed the bunker right there. Widowmine might activate new Splash. It Ooh. does to kill off that, uh, that Marauder right there. There's the Photon Overcharge. He's just, just going to go straight for the main. The Observer's on the way. There's uh, just enough energy for a Chrono Boost if he needs it. He might lose his Martian Core if he's not careful, though. Down and he goes. does! Mothership Core goes down, but Maker doesn't really have a lot else behind this. Like, he cancels the bunker. It doesn't really matter, though, because that was not all in by any stretch of the imagination. He was macroing behind this. He has his base up, 
and is now starting to mine from it, which is something that Minigun's not been able to do. He still also has to deal with this one widow mine that's sitting there. And I think Minigun spotted it. Yeah, there we go. He's got the Observer in play now, so he's going to be able to take the widow mine out, which is quite nice. It's really hard to say what that did because it was so equal. And resources lost is ridiculously equal. I think Maker got the better end of that because he was able to slow down mining at that natural and delayed it for so long, whereas he was able to get mules down on his natural and establish his defense here. But it does make him a bit vulnerable to a counterattack because, as we see, he's got barely any units on the map now. He's building... He's not able to build a lot of marines. He's got to kind of rely on a lot of marauders here because he actually has two barracks down with tech labs and not with reactors. I gotta say, I love the idea here from Minigun to go for Immortals. He's already got one Immortal out. Is chronoing out a second one. This is a big investment in Immortals. You don't normally see Protoss use Immortals a lot. I mean, they're good at trying to defend maybe at some timing attacks. But uh, versus Terran, the reason they're so tough is because they are worthless versus Marines. It's like a joke. But they also hard counter Marauders into the ground. So it basically comes down to where you're trying to individually click on uh, the Marauders there with those. It can be very tough to pull off. We'll see if he manages to do it here because he's actually gearing up himself for a counterattack. Yep, he and is. Maker is supply blocked in a huge way, oh, just my. now striking that depot. Again, this That's is the really worst bad. time for supply block, and uh, the force fields might actually just end it for him right here. That supply block. Oh, God, that's so painful. Because he only needs one bunker. every single unit. There's only one bunker down. It's an immortal sentry attack on two bases. This is really dangerous. It's also, it's going to hit slightly before Stim finishes. This is the perfect timing for Minigun. He immediately takes down that bunker. And this army's just getting absolutely crushed. Minigun smashes his way through the natural. As soon as those force fields go down, Maker's got to sack the natural here. Surely, there's no way out of that. Yeah, he should be able to save the command center itself. Um, yeah. He would have loved to have widow mines or siege tanks on the high ground, but that supply block, I mean, it, it that, lifted itself that might have killed at him, the man. first time, and I do think that the supply block ended up costing him this game. He would have had more units here. He wasn't out on the map scouting this attack. You could tell he was surprised when it got there. There was no SCVs there ready to repair. No. And this just shows you, you have to, you have to do everything right. You have to get the scouting. You can't be supply blocked. These are the basic mechanics that you cannot uh, forget against Minigun because he is going to punish you just like we're seeing right now. Even if Maker holds this, he's lost so many workers already. I don't even see him holding it. He's waiting for as many Marines as possible, and he's dropping mules every time he can. He's got Medivacs out now, which is nice, but all of these Zealots are just going to tear their way through this SCV count, and he's trying to push this back. There's more force fields going down. These two Immortals are still alive. I think Maker's going to have to give this up. He's down to 29 supply versus 75. He tried a bit of aggression, and then Minigun just came back and slapped him down. Maker was completely unprepared for that counterattack, and he, he's going out of this tournament. There's no question at this stage. There's no recovering from that. Yeah, 22 supply to 75. He's not on his, even two bases right now. Yes, he's got the orbital in his main base. He did manage to save it, but a handful of Marines is not enough. Honestly, at this point, Minigun can just contain him. He can expand. He can go for tech. He can really go for anything he wants and uh, just bust up that ramp at any time. So the Observer right there sees, all right, we got to go ahead and back out here a little bit. But when it's 80 supply to 26, yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's just no way to recover from it. There's I don't think SCVs. any amount of drops. Oh, God. Two. I I didn't I don't even want to see that right now. Yeah, you can see the income. Maker's income even with the mules is not even close. We've got Minigun doubling his income here even with the mules on the field. The Colossus is on the way out. Yeah, I mean Maker's hanging on. I understand why he is because of course this is his only shot and he's actually going for this full on doom drop here with his entire army because that's all he's got left. It may very well get lucky. I think it is going to get lucky. It's actually going to get in between here. It's not going to be seen. So this is the best situation you could hope for, but even then, what's he going to do with it? What, what is he planning on doing with that exactly? Oh, the Stalkers are going to get caught out of position. That, again, that's really, really nice, but let's not overestimate the chances of Maker here, really. I mean, this is all he has. This is his last ditch attempt to stay in this game right now, and it's not going to work. There's no question. Minigun should be able to hold this with his Colossus. He's warping in more units. There's nothing left here for Maker. Surely, as he loses this, this is when he gives up. Or not. It's six SCVs to 50, man. It's 21 supply to 89. There's a Colossus on the field. There's, you don't get out of this. There's no getting out of this. Yeah, I mean, what he would have had to have done is 
leave the base before the army could have retreated home and somehow killed every single worker. You can see Minigun right now, he's even throwing down cannons in his mineral line. That is how far ahead he is, even though he's only on two base. He yeah, realizes... He drops is a possibility. That's the only thing that Maker yeah. can do, right? Yeah, it's the only way Maker can actually win. Not that that's even a possibility that's right now. Happening. The Observer sees that the, uh, the medevacs have not left the base. Colossus is on the way. Um, taking a look at the upgrades, Thermal Lance is done, so I'm pretty sure this Colossus could just solo Maker right now. And uh, I think that's about what we're going to see here. This army's backed into a corner. This There's the remainder of the SCVs, but yeah. so that's going to be there, it. Then there went the remainder of the SCVs. GG, there it is, and Minigun advances. Maker, unfortunately, is out of the tournament. So we see. Now we know part of our round of eight, man. We do. We've got Root Puck and Root Minigun, two Protoss players advancing through to the round of eight here in week one. Got to say, Root uh, couldn't really be more happy about that. I mean, there's no way for them to have more players advance. So even though they kind of had a, uh, a team kill situation where there was three of them in a group where only two can advance, at least for their sake, two of them did advance. I think Maker got to show off his skills a little bit there. I do think that his nerves got to him not only in the first round, but uh, here in the last game. So unfortunately for him, not able to advance. But uh, I just want to say, TV, thanks for inviting me. It's been a ton of fun. This is only day number one, yep. as there are many, many more rounds to be had for this tournament. Lots of money on the line as well. So what are your thoughts about today? Uh, well, from a production standpoint, we need to fix things. This is pretty clear, but it was, we saw some good games, man. And it was interesting to see Maker come back and play a much better series. But then, of course, that, that little... He relies a little bit too much on these gimmicky little openings and the gimmicky little plays that can work, but, you know, I liked what he did with the Widowmine. I think it was good, but the problem is that what are you then going to do against the Immortals that are going to come down on you? And he didn't have an answer to that. He didn't do as much damage as I think he hoped that he could, and then he ended up in an awkward spot. But we still saw some great games today, some really evenly matched stuff as well. So this is really cool, and we've got Puck and Minigun going through, so that's two Protoss players. Of course, next week's group, we will not see Root in Group B. We will see Root in Group C. There are two remaining Root players. We've got Massa and... I actually can't remember who the other one is. Sorry, I'll find that out in a second. I know Massa's definitely in there, so that's going to be interesting. But Group B is going to be quite the intriguing mix, because what we have in Group B is Ghosty user, Hendralisk, Drunken Boy, and Neeb. So you've got two really good Zerg players against two lesser known Terrans. Two FXO Terrans, in fact, ended up in the same group there. So that's going to be an interesting group. I think, like, obviously the favorite going into that is probably Ghosty user, but I'm interested to see if Drunken Boy and Neeb can really put up a fight and actually take some series there. It is going to be awesome indeed. Uh, so thank you, everyone, who watched. I think it was over 32,000, something like I that at one point. we almost hit 40K across all streams at one point. So oh, considering the amount sick. of problems we had, that's really, really good. So thank you very much for your support, guys. The second group will be played on May the 11th. May the 11th at the same time on this channel. So that's a Saturday. We'll then have Group C the day after that, May the 12th. Group C is, yes, it was Kane. I keep forgetting about him because he's a recent addition. Kane, Masa, Suppy, and Hello Kitty, which is a really, really big group. Like, that to me is the group of death, in my opinion. That's a really strong group. So I'm interested to see what goes on. Then, of course, Group D will be on May the 17th. That's State, QXC, Xenocide, and RSVP, which a lot of people are calling QXC as an easy 2-0 out of that group. But I don't know. There's a lot to prove there. There's also a lot of preparation time for these guys as well. Yeah, I would love to see. I, I think that that's actually the group I'm, I'm most excited about, just because there's a lot of big personalities in there. Um, QXC I know has wanted to prove himself for a very long time. He's a very emotional player. Um, RSVP actually took a big break from StarCraft. Uh, he quit towards the end of Wings of Liberty and was not heard from for a very long time. And yep. then uh, he came back and managed to qualify for this tournament by being top 16 on ladder. So. Obviously, he has still got it, and uh, he is the one who won the amateur division a long time ago of the GSPA that I ran. I think that had like 3,000 uh, people play, something like that. So for him to come out on that is no small feat. So if he practices as much for this tournament as he did for that one, um, I think that would be a good encouragement for him not to stop playing StarCraft again. 
yeah, he's been streaming a lot lately as well, so I'm interested to see what comes of RSVP. But yes, next week we do have that really great group. Go to user Hendralis, Drunken Boy, and Neeb. Drunken Boy, of course, did pretty well in the Premier League qualifiers for WCS, knocking out Mia before losing to Hart. Neeb, Neeb to me is a very much an unknown quantity, so we'll see what happens with him. Hendralis recently picked up by Complexity, and of course, Go to user on Millennium, who is, in my opinion, the favorite to win that group. But there we go, folks. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you on the next episode of Shoutcraft America, which will be on May the 11th at 1400 EDT. Please do go check out shoutcraft.com to donate. Tip to these players if you so desire and check out all the information you could so desire about this tournament. Thank you very much, folks. We will see you next time. Good night.